we will begin by reviewing Al-Bayruni's concept of a great circle. By definition, a great circle is a plane that goes through a sphere, or our planet, in a way that bisects the Earth into two equal halves. By consequence, this would mean that the great circle goes through the center of the sphere. As shown earlier, the equator is an example of a great circle. Furthermore, any circle that goes through the North Pole and South Pole would be a great circle as well. Any other plane that cuts through a sphere that doesn't go through the center is known as a small circle. Let us bring up a diagram used earlier when looking at Al-Khalili's works. To determine the direction towards the Kaaba, all we need to do is focus on three points in the world. Those three points would be one's current location, Mecca, and the North Pole. We would construct the following three great circles. Number one, a great circle going through one's current location and Mecca. Number two, a great circle going through one's current location and the North Pole. Number three, a great circle going through Mecca and the North Pole. The angle MXA, referred to as Inhiraf al Qibla, is mathematically known as a spherical triangle. Our goal is to come up with a formula where one only knows at most the three locations and or distances between those locations. We will begin by formulating the cosine formula for spherical trigonometry, which is the basis for the rest of spherical trigonometry. Let us analyze the following diagram. The diagram is created in a similar fashion to the one provided in W.M. Smart's textbook on spherical astronomy. In this diagram, ABC is our spherical triangle. It is clear to see that the opposite sides of the points A, B, and C of the spherical triangle are denoted by lowercase a, b, and c respectively. We could determine the length of side a by the following method. If we construct a two-dimensional viewing of the great circle centered at o, but going through points b and c while containing side a, we would have the following diagram. Here, a is equal to r times angle b, o, c, where r is the radius. However, if we let r equal 1 to simplify matters, then a is equal to angle BOC. Also note that the circumference can be determined by c is equal to 2 pi r, which is just equal to 2 pi since r equals 1. So if angle BOC equals 90 degrees, or a is 1 quarter of the circumference, then a is equal to 1 quarter times 2 pi, which is equal to pi over 2 radians, or 90 degrees. The reason for showing this is to show that we can determine the length of any part of the arc on a great circle. Hence, going back to our previous diagram, we can determine side length A by angle BOC. Similarly, we can determine sides B and C by angles AOC and AOB respectively. We will continue to construct our original diagram. Here we have drawn point D extended from OB such that AD is tangent to the great circle AB at point A and is perpendicular to OA. Similarly, construct point E extended from OC in a similar manner, only this time let it be tangent to the great circle AC. In this construction, the spherical angle BAC is the same as angle DAE. Before proceeding, recall that we determined that angle AOB is equal to C and angle AOC is equal to B. This will become important because if we look at our right triangles OAD and OAE in our diagram, we can conclude the following using trigonometric ratios. Number one, using triangle OAD, we get tan C is equal to AD over OA, which is equivalent to AD is equal to tan C times OA, which is equivalent to AD squared is equal to 10 squared C times OA squared. Number two, similarly from triangle OAE, we can get AE is equal to 10 B times OA, and AE squared is equal to 10 squared B times OA squared. Number three, using triangle OAD, we get cos C is equal to OA over OD, thus sec C is equal to OD over OA. Therefore, OD is equal to sec C times OA which is equivalent to OD squared, which is equal to sec C squared times OA squared. Number four. 
Similarly, from triangle OAE, we can get OE is equal to sec B times OA, and OE squared is equal to sec squared B times OA squared. We can use one of the laws of cosines in triangle AED to continue. Using the law of cosines, we would thus get the following. DE squared is equal to AD squared plus AE squared minus 2 times AD times AE times cos A. Substituting what we previously determined for AD, AE, AD squared, and AE squared, we get the following. Notice that we can factor out OA squared to simplify this equation. Now let's observe triangle ODE. Recall that angle DOE is the same as the great circle side A. Using the law of cosines again, in this case, we would get the following. DE squared is equal to OD squared plus OE squared minus 2 times OD times OE times cos A. Substituting what we previously determined for OD, OE, OD squared, and OE squared, we would get the following. Similarly, we can factor out OA squared to simplify the equation. Notice that we have now determined two equations for DE squared. Hence, by substitution, we can let one equal the other, and we would get the following. We will now simplify this by getting cos A by itself. We will begin by using the common trigonometric identity, sec squared x is equal to 1 plus tan squared x. Our first two terms will thus turn into the following. Notice that we can cancel the tan squared c and tan squared b on the left and right hand side. We would thus get the following. Notice that we can factor out a 2 to get the following result. Multiplying both sides by cos c times cos b, we get the following. Therefore, by solving for cos A, we would get cos A is equal to cos B times cos C plus sine B times sine C times cos A, which is the cosine formula for spherical trigonometry as desired. Similarly, one could determine cos B and cos C. The other cosine formulas would be cos B is equal to cos C times cos A plus sine C times sine A times cos B and cos C is equal to cos A times cos B plus sine A times sine B times cos C. As Smart mentions in his textbook, from the three formula, all the other formula of spherical trigonometry in use can be derived. To determine a formula to easily calculate the direction of the Kaaba from any location in this world, we will now need to derive the four parts formula. This formula is derived in Smart's book and used by Dr. Muhibul La Durrani for determining the direction of the Kaaba. Dr. Durrani's work can be found at the following website. We will use the two cosine formulas that we just determined. We will now substitute the latter cos C into the former formula. We would thus get the following. We can now multiply cos A into the brackets. Then, we can subtract cos squared A, cos B from both sides. Then, on the left-hand side, we can factor out the common factor, which is cos B. Notice that 1 minus cos squared A, which is in the brackets, can be changed to sine squared A. Now, dividing by sine A, sine B, yields the following. Notice that cos B over sine B is equivalent to the cotangent of B. Also, we will use the sine formula to simplify the rightmost term, which is sine C over sine B times cos B. Simplifying, we get the following formula. Therefore, we can conclude that cos A, cos C is equal to sine A cot B minus sine C cot B, which is the four parts formula as desired. Smart, in his textbook, substitutes words into the letters to help describe this formula. By doing so, he describes this formula as the following. Cos of the inner side times cos of the inner angle is equal to sine of the inner side times cotangent of the other side minus sine of the inner angle 
times cotangent of the other angle. We can now manipulate this formula to determine how to arrive at the angle one would need from one city towards Mecca. If we let uppercase B be our current city, therefore we can just isolate for that letter to determine the formula we could use to determine the angle from any city towards Mecca. Here is our four parts formula. First, let us subtract sine A cotangent B from both sides. Then, divide by negative sine C. By a little bit of work, we can easily see that B is equal to arctan sine C over sine A cotangent B minus cos A times cos C, as required. In this example, if we let A be Mecca, B be one's current city, and C the North Pole, we can thus find out the direction towards Mecca. Here we have created a spherical triangle ABC. Notice that the points are denoted by uppercase A, B, and C, and the opposite side lengths by lowercase A, B, and C, respectively. Recall that sides a, B, and C are all segments of a great circle. We will now let the coordinates represent the latitude and longitude of each location. Hence, let X subscript A, Y subscript A be the coordinates of point A, where X subscript A is the latitude of that location and Y subscript A is the longitude of that location. To make matters easy, I will now call X subscript A as XA moving forward, and similarly Y subscript A as YA. Recall that we can determine the length of EC, which is part of a great circle. We previously did this as it is one quarter of the circumference of the great circle. Hence, it is pi over 2 radians, or 90 degrees. Since EC is equal to 90 degrees, therefore, if we know BE, then we can determine BC by subtracting BE from 90 degrees. Therefore, A is equal to 90 degrees minus BE. But we know that BE is the latitude at point B, which is denoted by XB. Therefore, A is equal to 90 degrees minus XB. Similarly, B is equal to 90 degrees minus XA. We can also determine the spherical angle C. This would be equal to YA minus YB, which are the longitudes. Notice that any longitude that is east of Greenwich are positive values and any west of Greenwich will be negative. Once again, A is equal to 90 degrees minus XB and B is equal to 90 degrees minus XA. Let's look at the formula determined for angle B. By substituting A is equal to 90 degrees minus XB, B is equal to 90 degrees minus XA, and C is equal to YA minus YB, we get the following formula. By letting A be Mecca, B be Waterloo, and C be the North Pole, all we need to know now are the coordinates of Waterloo and Mecca, and we could determine the direction from Waterloo to Mecca. Here are the coordinates of Waterloo and Mecca. By substituting these values in, we can easily determine that B is equal to 53.7 degrees. Therefore, the direction from Mecca from Waterloo would approximately be 53.7 degrees east of north. We have thus determined a formula that one could use to determine the direction to the Kaaba mathematically.